do want to predict coach of the year. Now, this is not just like, hey, here is our favorite coach starting the season. This is who we think is going to get those coach of the year awards at the end of the year. So I'm going to let you go first, JP. Yeah, I'm going with uh, Kyle Whittingham at Utah. Uh, he's done it before in his career. I think Utah is in a very interesting spot. We've talked about realignment. We've talked about the Big 12. Uh, I do think it's a balanced conference, but I believe in them to be able to pull it out and ultimately get a first round bye in the college football playoff. And they're going to be in a, a different spot than they had been before, because I think a lot of times they were, you know, they were punching out of their weight class when they had to pull off upsets. Like Utah has never been the most talented roster, but they've been pretty consistent. They've had multiple 10 win seasons over the last five years or so. Uh, but I think the idea of seeing Kyle Whittingham go out there, have success through a conference schedule, and then ultimately secure a first round buy with this team after a, winning a big 12 championship, which I think happens for them. Um, I think he would have a resume that says coach of the year. And quite frankly, he's got veteran guys coming back. We've talked about Cam Rising, uh, you know, super, all offseason. Super veteran. <laughs> I mean, dude's like my age right now. So uh, he's got the pieces, I think, to be able to have the success. But he will he will stand out more in this scenario than I think he was able to playing in the Pac-12 coaching Utah. Well, first of all, more visible, right? I mean, that was part yeah. of the problem with the Pac-12. But yeah, absolutely. Winning a conference in year one is not easy. And so I think anyone who's going to be in the mix to do that will absolutely be in the mix for all the awards. I'm going to say that it's going to go to Matt Rule. Now, I'm not saying Nebraska is going to play for a Big Ten title or anything. But have you looked at their schedule? Oh, like, yeah. have you looked at the Husker schedule? They should be bowl eligible by Halloween. They haven't made sure. a bowl since 2016. And I think they're going to do it by Halloween because of the way the schedule falls for them. Like, I mean, we're they... going to see we're, we're going to see them up close. Like, we're going to see them, I think, exercise some demons against Colorado in week yes. two. And that's kind of it. Yeah, they could be, I think, 7-0 and by the time they face Ohio State. And then their yes. schedule really ramps up in the last five games or so. But, like, yep. getting off to that start, and especially if you can do it with a freshman quarterback in Dylan Raiola, which a lot of – we watch him in the spring. A lot of people are high on him and his ability. Like, I, I think this is a, a really good pick out of you. It, well, and, and think about the way that this award usually goes. It's usually teams that have struggled and then turn around. Or mm -hmm. someone you don't have high expectations for that that overachieves, but Nebraska getting back to bowl eligibility, absolutely the kind of coach that would win this award, and especially if they do it that soon. Again, you know, you could have some losses late in the year, but if that's locked up, and then at that point you're just talking about what quality bowl you get to play in with a true freshman quarterback and Dylan Rayola with an improved defense, you fixed a lot of these things, you got Nebraska back to relevance. Yeah, that's where I think that's the type of coach that wins these types of awards. So we'll see if we're right. I think we've had some really good picks there and obviously two of the best coaches in college football as a whole.